You're late for your meeting. What is my schedule? You're due at the hospital in an hour, and Thomas Shea is cooling his heels in your office. No good. Let him. I don't think the most powerful attorney in the city likes to be kept waiting. Uh, Mr. Shea tends to forget he works for us. Sister Margaret, you are becoming dangerously indispensable. I'm going to requisition you from the Archbishop. this priest? The young nun is getting me. I still don't understand why you couldn't handle this by yourself. Well, Father O'Neill's asking some questions I couldn't answer. What kind of question? About our real estate dealings for the church. You handled most of the transactions yourself. Just who is this priest? They brought him in for an independent audit. He's, I hear he's already cleaned house in two dioceses. New accountants, new lawyers. Our firm has represented the church for over two decades. And I expect we'll be here long after he's gone. Ah. Father O'Neill, <laughs> I've heard so much about you. Nice to finally meet you, Mr. Shea. Finally, Father. I'm sorry to seem so elusive. I've been tied up on other matters. I see. Well, considering all the money we're paying, I'd have thought the church's affairs would come first. Hmm? Please. Good morning, Father. Well, how's it going with Father O'Neill? You keeping up with him? Well, right now I have to get over to the archives at the convent, and then I have to come back here to get some clarifications on the Archdiocese's books before we leave for the hospital, and that's just this morning. Mm -hmm. You should be taking your final vows pretty soon. In two months. The church needs people like you. You keep us on our toes. Thank you, Father. Well, it's time to go. Someone has got to answer the Archbishop's phone. <laughs> Give my regards to the Archbishop. And remind him he owes me a dinner. I would like to review those partnership agreements on Monday. And so you will. Goodbye, Father. Thank you. Well, Monsignor, is the Archbishop in? He's off for the day with an old friend. Can I do anything for you? No. No, I don't think so. Father O'Neill. If you wish to discuss diocese business affairs, you talk to me. I talk to the Archbishop. The Archbishop asked me to report directly to him. Unfortunately, he is not available, and I am his financial director. I'm sorry. I'd rather wait till he gets back. Father, the hospital. Thank you. Excuse us. Well, we're early for a change. Maybe I'll make a few calls. Oh, no, no. I'm taking you to the cafeteria. You'll forget to eat lunch again. Have you become responsible for my care and feeding as well? Somebody has to be. You obviously can't do it for yourself. Sister, sister, anyone ever tell you you are impertinent? Lots of people. Well, Come on. Here. Yes. I understand you requisitioned some files from my office without my permission. Dr. Lattimore, I don't think this is the time or the place to discuss it. It's as good a time as any. Fine. Doctor, how you treat your patients, well, that's your business. But how you run this hospital, that's mine. Look, Father O'Neill, you want something from me. Just ask me. I did. Several times. Excuse us. Sister? What was that about? Uh, he's incorrigible. He's supposed to be a great doctor. And the worst chief of medicine any hospital ever had. He's autocratic, insulting. Because of him, all the best doctors are leaving. Well, he certainly wasn't very charming to you. Well, at least with me, he has an excuse. He knows I'm going to recommend he be removed. How was that? Marginal. You have those budgets the uh, hospital administrator sent over? Yes, I have them right here. 
Let me see that. Ooh. It's just a paper cut. I think it'll be okay. Does it hurt? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Father O'Neill, I uh, tried to reach you at your office. We left early. Is there a problem? Well, I couldn't get the accounts receivable you requested. Mrs. Cartwright, you're the administrator of this hospital. Can't you get me a simple piece of information? I'm sorry, but the computer went down. I'll have it in the next day or two. Well, no point in meeting until then. Good day. Blood pressure and a pulse. What happened? I, uh, we were taking a walk. I, um, uh, I sort of collapsed. The nurse will get your vital signs. I'll be right back. You can't stay here. I want to stay with my friend. Your Grace. Your what? Oh, John, haven't you met the Archbishop? Oh, great. I'll get the doctor. I don't believe it. Father O'Neill actually gave you time off. Father O'Neill is very dedicated. I don't know where you find the strength. They're teaching her patience. Mm, I call it endurance. It's like a marathon with Father O'Neill. She's young and aging fast. The man's a workaholic. I rather like it. Maybe you just like him. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, come on, Margaret. You can tell us. Tell you what? Tell us about you and Father O'Neill. I think you ought to mind your own business. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. No problem. Mr. Eastman, I've been going over the Archdiocese books. How long has your firm been our accountants? Oh, nine years. What's the occasion? None that I know of. Well, it's the best kind of gift, a surprise. Hmm. Very handsome. Would you excuse me? Oh, Father Chris? Have you seen Sister Margaret? Not this morning, Father. Look what she gave me. Well, I must tell you, there has been some talk. Perhaps you two have been working too closely together. I've got to put a stop to this right now. Tom, don't be too hard on her. Good morning, Father. Could you please explain this to me? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Why did you give me this gift? I didn't give you a gift. There's a card. Oh, my love, Mark. I didn't write this. This isn't even my handwriting. Well, who wrote it then? Who else knows I always borrow your pen? Are you saying that I'm lying, Father? Well, do you have any idea who might have put this in my office? I don't know. 
I'm afraid people are getting the wrong idea about us. Maybe, maybe it would be simpler if we stopped working together. We haven't done anything wrong. Margaret, what if someone is trying to discredit me? In my work with the church, I can't afford even the slightest hint of impropriety. Father, we shouldn't let this change anything. It's not fair. Well, think about it. Oh, Mr. Eastman's been waiting long enough. Is there anything I can do? We'll talk later. Like I could ski down Mount Whitney. He never could catch up to me. That's what? true. But I could play gin. Gin. Oh. Ouch! Oh. How's your flight? Perry, I was worried to death about you. They told me you collapsed from exhaustion. I rushed here from the airport. I didn't even go to the hotel. I'm the one to blame, Della. You see, a few weeks ago, I brought in a priest, a troubleshooter, to look into the Archdiocese's financial affairs. I haven't gotten the final report yet, but he's certain there's embezzlement in this hospital. Stephen asked me to help investigate. Several of his close advisors may be involved. Your secret would have been very safe with me. Sorry for the deception, Della. For the moment, I uh, want to stay undercover. <laughs> Very clever. You think so? Tomorrow we go to work. We'll begin by meeting with your father, O'Neill. Well, I must be going. Hey, when do I get the $16 you lost? When we finish the game. Not before. Good to see you again, Stefan. Mm. Stefan, the food here had better be good. Miracles do happen. About you. I've known that man 42 years. I've never seen him like this. It's that serious. Everything he's worked for is on the line. Hello? Of course, Father. One moment. Sister Margaret, it's for you. It's Father O'Neill. Yes, Father? Sister Margaret. I want you to come over to my hotel. Have you thought about what we discussed this afternoon? You never mind that. Just come over. Right away. You don't have to raise your voice to me, Father. I'll be there as soon as I can. Thank you. Margaret? Yes? Father O'Neill had to step out for a moment. I'm Richard Logan. Come in, please. Thank you, Father. He'll be back right away. Uh, would you care for something to drink? There's sherry. 
don't I know you? No, I don't think so. Would you like some? Yes, thank you. Are you in this diocese, Father? No, I'm at the Church of St. Virgil. I stop by the Archbishop's office when I'm in the city. And you're a friend of Father O'Neill's? No. Not really. very well. Is something wrong? I feel, I feel very dizzy. What, what are you doing? No! Stop! Good night, sister. help you. I'm okay. I'm okay. Are you, you sure? Yeah. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Father O'Neill. Say this Father Logan gave you a glass of sherry. That's right. <laughs> Sister, we've been through this suite several times and no sign of your glass. In fact, we can't even find a bottle of sherry. Maybe he took it. I don't know. Let's get through. Can I ask you something else, Sister? Have you ever blacked out before? You have any sort of medical history? No. My sister Margaret. Now, how did you say you ripped your jacket? He tore it. Are you all right, my child? Um, Archbishop Coral, this is Sergeant Brock. Oh. Oh, can you tell me what happened? There really isn't much to tell. It appears Father O'Neill was stabbed sometime late last night do you have any idea who did it not yet is she free to go well we really have a few more sergeant brock i think she's been through enough of course thank you archbishop i'm looking for father richard logan sister margaret says he's at the church of saint virgil have you heard of the man? Give my office a call. He shouldn't be too hard to find. Thank you.
Sister Margaret is certainly going to be the prime suspect. I am concerned for her. You have good reason to be. Either she killed Father O'Neill or this Logan did, and I suspect the police aren't going to find him. Harry, the press smells a scandal. I, uh, I'm embarrassed to ask. Then it. don't. You'd better see if you can get hold of Paul. And just what do you want me to tell him? Tell him to get here yesterday. I'd like to meet your sister, Margaret. I thought you'd never ask. Oh. Margaret! I'd like you to meet some old friends of mine, Perry Mason and Della Street. Of energy for a man who's just suffered a collapse. I healed quickly. Runs in the family. Father O'Neill was such a good man. Why would somebody murder him? I don't know. It's so unfair. You cared for him a great deal. Yes. We distributed a sketch of Father Logan all over the city this morning. And that includes parochial schools, churches, convents, rectories, every Catholic institution from here to the suburbs. And we showed it to all the guests and help at Father O'Neill's hotel. Sir, I'm listening. No one has recognized as Father Logan. No one has ever seen him before. And there's not one single shred of evidence to show that this Father Logan was ever in Father O'Neill's room. You think Sister Margaret is lying? I don't think that there is a Father Logan. Never was. And several witnesses have suggested that Sister Margaret was uh, close to Father O'Neill. And by that you mean... She had a romantic attachment to him, sir. That's absurd. I baptized the girl. I've known her since she was a child. Sergeant Brock, Margaret wouldn't lie, and she wouldn't break her vows. Archbishop, I'm going to have to conduct a search of her room at the convent, sir. By what authority? I have a warrant. I would have thought you'd have the courtesy to inform Sister Margaret. Thank you for your advice, Sister. We'll take it from here. I'll be in my office if you need me. Thank you, Sister. this one nailed. My dear Margaret. The cab is downstairs. Good. We mustn't keep the Archbishop waiting. Sister Margaret, I'm afraid you'll have to come downtown with us. What's the problem? Who are you? The name's Mason. What do you want with Sister Margaret? We found Father O'Neill's letter in your room. What letter? I, ne I never got a letter from him. And who gave you the right to go through my room? We had a warrant, Sister. Why don't we step in here? Now, where is this letter? I have a copy of it here. May I see it? I'll read it to you. My dear Margaret, 
I fear we have been compromised and risk ruining our careers. He never sent me a letter like that. Let him finish. We'll both be better off if we put an end to it now and don't see each other again. I'm sorry you deserve better than to sign Tom. Mr. Mason, you have to believe me. How do you know that's from him? Oh, it's his, all right. We ran a handwriting comparison. That letter, it, it's about our working together, but he never gave that to me. Sister Marlowe, I don't think there is a Father Logan. He was there. And I swear to you, he was there. I don't think so. Why not? Because I think that she was in love with Father O'Neill. That is not true. We have this letter. You were seen holding hands. There was a lover's quarrel over a gift, and he ended your affair. There was never any affair. Sister Margaret, I think that you went up to his room, and I think you went up there to plead with him not to end it. I think maybe there was a moment between you two, and then you blacked out. But you blacked out after you killed him. That was not what happened. That's enough, Sergeant. Sir, we have her fingerprints on the knife that was used to kill Father O'Neill. Someone could have put the knife in her hand after she blacked out. Sister Margaret, I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Father Thomas O'Neill. You have the right to remain I'll silent. I'll advise her of her rights. Are you her attorney, sir? I am now. Your Honor, defendant waives further reading of the complaint and advisement of constitutional rights. We enter a plea of not guilty. Your Honor, the state requests a preliminary hearing at the court's earliest possible convenience. Mr. Mason? Defense concurs. Thank you, gentlemen. This matter will be set for December 10 at 9 a.m. The court has recessed 15 minutes. All rise. Mr. Mason? Michael Rustin. Possibly you remember I appeared before you in appellate court. Yes. You made a very impressive argument. I'm flattered you remember. This uh, case, a delicate matter, especially for my client. Mr. Mason, you have a reputation for not cutting any deals. I'll see you on the 10th. How good is he? Very. Where's Paul? I'm meeting him at the airport at 11. Good. Bring him straight to Stefan's office. fine. We're going to meet him downtown. Well, wait a minute. Your message said he collapsed. He's in a hospital. Well, actually, he's just fine. You must be crazy. What am I doing here, Della? Well, there's a case, and... A case? You've heard of Stephanie Harris, the most beautiful model in the history of California? Her father was paying me to accompany her to Tahiti. Now Howard Burton is in paradise, and I am here on freezing. Will you please get in? What is this case? Well, there's a nun. A nun? Yes. I'll fill you in on the way. Get in. Terrific. Yes? Well, send them in. Hello. Hello. Archbishop Coro, Sister Margaret, I'd like for you to meet our private investigator, Paul Drake. How do you do? How do you do? Hello. Hello. Hi. Aren't you cold? I left in something of a hurry. You'd better get some warm clothes before you catch pneumonia. Good idea. You went over the case with Della. Oh, yes. I'd like you to start looking for a Father Logan. Sister Margaret can give you what little information we have. The police haven't found any trace of him. Well, maybe we can. Is there any place I can get a cup of coffee around here? At the convent. 
Well, would you care to join me? I'm buying. Excuse me. Excuse us. This is the police artist sketch of Father Logan. Fairly accurate? Yes. Anything else? Scars, birthmarks? No. Mm -hmm. Anything peculiar that the sketch doesn't show? Like what? Did he uh, pull his ear, scratch his head, uh, have any habits or something strange? Anything about him that struck you as uh, kind of odd? No. No, I don't think so. No. No, I knew I had seen him before. It was in here. It was in the cafeteria, and he was... He was sitting right over there. And he was folding his matches. So? You asked if he'd done anything strange. He had a nervous habit. He lit a cigarette, and then he folded down all the matches in his matchbook. And I think he threw them away. He did that here? Yes. When? A few days ago. When do they collect the trash? This is what detective work is all about. Following the trail, finding the clues, and getting very dirty. You really like this kind of work? Well, it, uh, it could be worse. How? Let's thank the man upstairs. There's only a couple days worth of garbage here. Paul, I don't even know if Logan threw the matches away. And even if he did, they could come from anywhere. Well, why, don't you, why don't you pray for me, huh? Why don't you talk to me? What, uh... Sister Margaret? Something I said? With all due respect to my eminent colleague, I object to Mr. Mason representing Sister Margaret. Would you prefer local counsel? I don't think you understand the issues here, Mr. Mason. This is a scandal, and I, for one, don't want it to touch the Archbishop or the Church. Sir, Mr. Mason is your friend. As long as he represents Sister Margaret, you are personally associated with her defense. I agree completely. I made a commitment to Sister Margaret, and I intend to fulfill it. In any case, there's no avoiding the scandal. We are under no obligation to defend her. We can cut our losses. Just a minute. Why do you assume she's guilty? <laughs> the circumstantial evidence is overwhelming. But that's all it is. Circumstantial. Let's assume for a moment that Margaret is innocent. Why then does someone dress as a priest and kill Father O'Neill? Well, he could be, uh, uh... He could be a psychopath. Perhaps. Or it could have something to do with Father O'Neill's investigation of the church affairs. He was investigating us. I know. I'll need access to Father O'Neill's papers. The church's affairs are confidential. There is no other way to give Sister Margaret a proper defense, and I intend to do that, even if it requires a subpoena for every single one of you. That won't be necessary. A girl's life is at stake. We will cooperate in every way. Archbishop, we simply want to protect your reputation. I think it is in excellent hands. You need help. Now, what, uh, what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? This is something that I always felt I must do. Yeah? You happy here? Mm-hmm. Sister Margaret, may I ask you something of a personal nature? Sure. Did you ever date when you were younger? A little. You ever miss it? I find great comfort in the church. Well, 
That's a shame. What do you mean by that? Well, oh, I, ju I just meant that uh, you're very pretty. I think quite bright. And I uh, would guess there's a lot of young men out there who would find you very appealing. That's all. Well, Mr. Drake, I'll take that as a compliment. Well, please do. And while you're at it, take a look at this. What do you think? That's the way he folded them. You're sure? I saw him do it. In the cafeteria and at the hotel. Where are they from? Westlake Health Club. Time for me to work out. Mr. Mason asked me to bring you this. Oh, thanks. Sorry. Perfect, eh? Any sign of Logan? Not yet. Margaret, you better go. Don't you want some company? I'm trying to be inconspicuous. Having you here doesn't help. But I'm the one who can recognize him. I can do that from the picture. I think it would be a good idea if I stayed. Margaret, please. I want you to stay here. I thought I asked you to wait outside. This is no time to argue. Excuse me, a guy came in wearing a black jacket. Where is it? Probably changing. Over there. Stay. Where you going, sister? I'm with him. Come back here. Hey, hey, hey. Where are you? Crazy? Hey, shit, here. Hey, hey, hey. 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 four times a week. Did you ever see him with anyone? Did he have any friends? Drake, I'm not keeping you away from anything, am I? No. How long has he been a member here? Six months. Six months. That means this man must have been a resident. Go away, Drake. What? Go away. Oh. All right. Well, I'm going to be right over here if you need me. Please. Perry. The man we call Logan was registered here under the name of McGrath. Unfortunately, it appears that the name is a phony. So's the address. At least we know he exists. And knows we're looking for him. Well, you certainly were chasing someone that looked like this. This is the man who said he was Father Logan. Yeah, but I got nothing to tie him into the murder. You certainly can't arrest a man for running through a health club. Sergeant, I swear to you, he was in that room. Well, okay. I'm done here. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Well, we've got to place Logan at the scene of the crime. Go over the police file in the morning, double-check their interviews with everyone at the hotel. Consider it done. Another couple of washings. That sweater might fit.
I'm sorry Logan got away. Yeah. <clears throat> me too. What time are you picking me up in the morning? I didn't know I was. Do you want me to go with you? I don't think so. You were right. I shouldn't have followed you into the health club. And I said I was sorry. Look, 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 sister, I don't want to get into this, all right? It's late. I'm wet. We're both tired. I'll keep you informed. Good night. I don't like your patronizing attitude. I am not being patronizing. You know I could be of some help. I can manage. And you're not very forgiving. And you are the most irritating nun I have ever met. As a matter of fact, you are the only irritating nun I have ever met. Maybe you could work on correcting that. Good night. There was a card. It was attached to the gift that Father O'Neill found on his desk. And I'm sure that he filed it away somewhere. It isn't worth getting upset over. Well, it wasn't my handwriting. And he, he thought that someone might be trying to discredit him. I don't know where it's gone. Margaret. Margaret. It's not going to get any easier. Mm -hmm. mm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've been organizing some of Father O'Neill's papers. This is the hospital budget. And here are the preliminary reports on the real estate holdings. I'd like you to set up appointments with everyone Father O'Neill questioned. I wasn't present at all of his meetings. Well, whatever you can recall, give to Della. Where's Paul? Out solving this case single-handedly. He, uh, he went to buy some clothes. and Then he was going to go see the police. Sister, see if you can find Monsignor Kaiser. I need to talk with him. Did something happen between Sister Margaret and Paul? I don't know. You worried about her? <sighs> yes. So am I. You know what? Mason's got me here until I satisfy him. The case is hopeless and he lets me go home. Come on, be a sport. Let me look at the case file so I can get out of here. I have 56 open cases to work on. I don't have time to be monkeying around with you. Let me put it another way. I could be gone inside of a week. That is the best offer I have heard all day. A week. Thank you. Monsieur Kaiser, we were looking for you. Yeah, and here I am. Possibly you were searching for Father O'Neill's recommendation. Actually, I need the disbursement file. You mean this? Yes, thank you. Were you aware of Father O'Neill? was going to recommend that you be replaced? No, I didn't know that. It's no secret you weren't pleased that he was here. Who told you that? Was it because he reported directly to the Archbishop? Mr. Mason, the man was an opportunist. He was brought here for a simple audit and he turned it into an inquisition. I understand you left a successful business career to join the church. I came here because I felt that my talents would be appreciated and I could work on something I believed in. So being removed from this position would be a...
terrible blow. Tell me, Monsignor, what would you have done if you had found this recommendation? Mr. Mason, I deeply resent your implications. I don't blame you. Good day, sir. Peter. Peter. What's the matter? Monsignor Kaiser just called. He said this this Mason fellow's taking up where only left off. Helen, calm down. Peter, I'm scared. Come with me. Look, I don't have much time. Mason's going to be here any second to see me. About what? What are you going to say to him? Helen, for God's sake, pull yourself together. I'm not going to implicate you. We're in this together. Well... I better go. Oh, Peter, I've got to see you tonight. No, I can't. Carol's giving one of her parties. Well, tell her it's an emergency. Dr. Lattimore. I... I didn't mean to intrude. The nurse told me you were here. Uh, I'd like you to meet our administrator, Helen Cartwright. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Um, I was just leaving. Thank you. So, how are you feeling? Uh, never better. Your recuperative powers are amazing. It runs in the family. Well, I wish I could help you with Sister Margaret's defense. I've always liked her. Perhaps you can. I gather Father O'Neill felt the quality of medicine had fallen under your tenure. What did Father O'Neill know about the quality of medicine? He seemed to think you were driving good doctors away. That's ridiculous. Look, I'm not the problem. Go on. Well, you're going to find this out anyway. This hospital is habitually short of equipment and supplies. That's why those doctors left. There's never enough money. There's never enough money. The person in charge of the physical operation of the hospital is Mrs. Cartwright, is it not? That's right. And under the circumstances, I think Mrs. Cartwright is doing a terrific job. Under the circumstances, I'd be surprised if you didn't. Checked into the hotel around Tampa. So you did not see this man dressed as a priest go into the hotel? I already told the police everything I know. This will just take a second. I have a dozen people I want to see, and I'm running late. I didn't see any priests anywhere. Mr. Ellison, you live in Bayport. That's 15 minutes out of town, right? Right. Why didn't you go home? <sighs> well, to tell you the truth, I had too much to drink. I went to a party, and I didn't want to drive home. By the way, the night clerk said you checked in with your wife. Well, yeah, but she didn't see anything. I'd like to talk with her. I don't think she can help. Why? I already asked her. You'd be wasting your time. Well, you never know. Maybe I can uh, jog her memory. What's the number? <sighs> Look, I told her she didn't see anything. Mr. Ellison, were you with your wife at the hotel? I think you'd better leave. Operator, yes, the number in Bayport for a Mr. and Mrs. Ellison, please. Just what the hell do you think you're doing? Thank you. I said leave. It's ringing. I saw your priest. Look, if my wife finds out what I was up to, she'll kill me. We'll keep you out of it. My friend and I were coming into the back entrance of the hotel. This priest gets out of a red and white cab, follows us in. You don't see priests sneaking in and out of hotels very often. We thought it was funny. Did you see him go upstairs, go into a room? I saw him get out of the cab and come in. That's it. That's enough. Logan was seen arriving at the Mayfair Hotel in a cab. Have you spoken to the dispatcher? For a small sum, which I'm sure you'll reimburse me for at a later date. He gave me the name of the driver. I know where to look for him this afternoon. Well, we need Logan. I'll find him, I'll find him. What did uh, you come up with? Well, we've been over the hospital records. The good father was correct. Someone is stealing them blind.
you're late for your meeting. No hat. <laughs> no kiss. Paul. Oh. <laughs> Let me take a look. Here you go. Where's Sister Margaret? She's in church. Well, good. Good. How is she? She could use a friend, Paul. Why are you looking at me? What happened between you two? Nothing. Well, I don't know what it was, but she's very upset. You know, everyone around here is shunning her. She's alone, Paul, and she's scared. Am I interrupting? Sit down. I got a new lead on Logan. You don't seem very excited. I'm sorry. I, I think I just have other things on my mind right now. Margaret, you're on trial for murder. What could be more important than that? You wouldn't understand. Try me. How would you feel if you had spent six years of your life preparing for something and then you didn't know if it was right there's a name for that it's called cold feet it's not that what is it then i don't know if i can take my final vows why not I've never admitted this to anyone before. But I was attracted to Father O'Neill. And I tried not to be. And I couldn't help myself. I, I couldn't control myself, Paul. And I don't know if I'm fit to be a nun. Margaret. You're a human being. You, you have feelings for... like everybody else. There are higher standards of conduct in the church. And I've failed them. You're being too hard on yourself, Margaret. I don't know. Maybe it's me. I, I can't live with these doubts anymore and I have, to, I have to find a way to prove myself. Well, I'm sure if anybody can, you can. Do you really think so? Margaret, you are the most obstinate woman I have ever met. And I have no doubt that whatever you set your mind to, you can do.
Come on. Buy your lunch. Mm. Your experience in real estate seems to have served you well. Actually, I built this place. I wasn't referring to your house. Mr. Mason. Good, you're here. I uh, wanted to go over some of the real estate transactions that have been made for the church. I thought you might have something to add. Anything specific? Yes. Possibly you could explain this to me. Mr. Mason, for every property I've sold at a loss, I can show you ten that were profitable to the church. That isn't the point, Mr. Shea. I can make a strong case that you've systematically sold off the church's most valuable properties to your clients and associates. Nothing illegal about selling property to people I know. At the very least, your ethics could be questioned. What about you, Mr. Eastman? You were the accountant for the church at the time of all these transactions. Weren't you supposed to be guarding the church's interest? We're an accounting firm. We're not investment counselor. Mr. Mason, is this the best you can do in defense of this now? <laughs> Mr. Shea, what would happen to your law firm if the church accused you of fraud? I won't dignify a question like that with a reply. I can understand why, Counselor. Della told me you found Logan. Cab driver said he picked him up right over there. Perry, this is no place for you. This is no place for either of us. Timing's perfect, there he is. Excuse me. Driver, why did we have to wait over 20 minutes for you to arrive? We were busy. With that outfit, waiting 20 minutes is nothing. Why don't they do something about it? The hospital's got an exclusive contract with this ambulance service. In my humble opinion, they haven't got the men or the vehicles to do the job. But the hospital won't change companies. Very lucky. Here, hold that. 
It's just a flesh wound. Do you feel weak? No. Why? You lost some blood. What happened? Somebody took a shot in the dark. Did you see who? No. How is he, doctor? He's going to be just fine. I'll have the nurse bandage him up. You all right? Yeah, fine. The, uh, the good doctor wanted to know if I saw who shot me. Really? Well, now that Logan is dead, what do we do? You can start by finding out who owns that ambulance service. I'm going to find out what's in this syringe. find out who owns the Centurion Ambulance Service. Can I sue? What? The leg. Oh, oh, no, I'm, uh... <clears throat> I'm in kind of a hurry. Clock me. seconds. I'm very impressed. I've done better. Is that right? Huh. You got what you want? Looks like some kind of holding company. Thank you. You've been cooperative, quick, and courteous. What's your name? Oliver Latham. Oliver. How do you do? Listen, do you have a card? Because I might have a few more questions I want answered, and I know I can trust them to you. Oliver, thank you very much. Could you describe the defendant's condition when you arrived at the hotel? She appeared to be upset. What about her physical condition? Well, the jacket was ripped. Did she say anything to you? Yes. Did you explain her constitutional rights to her? I don't feel it was necessary at the time, you see. Uh, she wasn't uh, a suspect then. She was not? No. What did she say to you at that time? She said that she had arrived the night before. She met Father Logan. He gave her some sherry. She became drowsy. She fell asleep. She was on the floor when the waiter arrived. They discovered Father O'Neill's body. During your subsequent investigation, did you discover anyone else besides the defendant who actually saw this Father Logan at the hotel? No, I did not. Hmm. Uh, during the investigation of the room, did you find a bottle of sherry or a glass? No, I did not. Hello. Well, may I help you? Oliver Latham, State Department of Corporations. Is there a problem? Our records show you failed to make your annual filings. Statements of current ownerships, Form 1001C and 902A, should have reached our office two months ago. Well, I think you're mistaken. Our administrator is very prompt about matters like that. Well, we didn't receive them. If you sent them, I certainly hope you have duplicates on hand. Well, I'm sure we do. I'll have to talk to the administrator. If you could just wait a minute. All right.
I show you now People's Exhibit 3, and I ask you if you recognize it. So do it. That's the kitchen knife that's found in Paul O'Neill's suite. It has been stipulated by both Mr. Mason and myself that this knife was, in fact, the murder weapon. Were fingerprint tests run on this knife? Yes. One set of prints were found, a defendant's. Thank you. I have shown counsel, and I am now showing you a letter marked People's Exhibit 4 for identification. I ask you if you recognize this. Yes, that's the letter seized during the course of a search of the defendant's room. It has been stipulated that this letter was written by the decedent. Will you read the letter into the record, please? The letter says, my dear Margaret, I fear we have been compromised and risk ruining our careers. We'll both be better off if we put an end to it now and don't see each other again. I'm sorry, you deserve better. And assign Tom. Thank you very much, Sergeant. Your witness? Sergeant Brock, you personally saw the body of the man Sister Margaret identified as Father Logan? Yes, I did. No further questions. Drake, what do you think you're doing? let you do this i have to testify absolutely not mr mason i must reston will go after you he'll do whatever he can to make you lose your temper it'll be all right no it won't be all right if you give in to his provocation i'm sorry i have to do this margaret listen to me brock's testimony hurts you we can't take the risk mr mason i know how hard you've worked and please understand, this has nothing to do with the trial. What are you saying? I have studied to be a nun for six years. And if I'm not equal to this test, I don't deserve to take my final vows. It's a question of faith. Sister Margaret, are you testifying of your own free will and volition? Yes, sir, I am. And would you please tell this court why you chose to be a witness? I wanted everybody to hear the truth from me. Then I ask you for once and all time, did you or did you not murder Father Thomas O'Neill? No, sir, I did not. Thank you. Your witness. Sister Margaret, don't most priests live at the rectory? Yes. So by staying at a hotel, wasn't it easier for Father O'Neill to see you? Well, that's not why he lived Yes or it. no? Sister Margaret, wasn't it easier for Father O'Neill to see you? Yes. And in point of fact, on the night of the murder, didn't Father O'Neill call you and tell you to come to his hotel room? Yes, he did. Had you been there before? Several times. Yes? Exactly how many times? Uh, once? Twice? Four or five. Had you ever been to his room at such a late hour before? 
No. And yet you thought nothing going? No. Hmm. Sister Margaret, how did you feel about Father O'Neill? Did you like him? Yes. Did you find him attractive? Your Honor, I object. Irrelevant. Sustained. We have heard testimony that you were seen holding Father O'Neill's hand in public. Is that true? I cut my finger and he was looking at it. You gave him an expensive gift, didn't you? No. No, I, I didn't. I call your attention to People's Exhibit 4. Do you recognize this uh, letter written by Father Thomas O'Neill to you? No. Sister Margaret, we have the testimony of a handwriting expert. This was written by Father O'Neill. Would you like to reconsider your testimony? Sergeant Brock showed that letter to me, and that was the very first time that I saw it. This was addressed to you. This was found in your room, and yet you're saying you never received it? That's right. You want us to believe you didn't get this note? You want us to believe you didn't give him the gift, Sister Margaret? Isn't it true you were in love with Father O'Neill? I object. This is irrelevant. Your Honor, Mr. Mason and his client have opened the door to this line of questioning. Your Honor, the prosecutor's questions exceed the scope of direct examination. I loved Father O'Neill. And you had an affair? No. Really? Sister Margaret... Didn't you just testify that you visited his room on more than one occasion? Yes, but I... Please, Sister Margaret, yes or no? Wasn't that your testimony? Yes, but you make it seem as when if I went... When you got the note terminating the relationship, didn't you go to his room? He called me and he said... Yes or no, Sister Margaret? Yes. Thank you. Didn't you beg him to take you back, yes or no? No. Didn't he tell you the relationship had to come to an end? Yes, but the relationship... Isn't it true there was a fight? No. And in the fight, didn't your jacket get ripped? No. And the crucifix torn from your neck? No. Sister Margaret, isn't it true you were Father O'Neill's lover? No. He rejected you? No. You killed him. not true no further questions there's someone else on trial here someone whose voice can never be heard father thomas o'neill was a good and an honest priest and there's not a person in this courtroom who could question his integrity He never broke his vows with me. I never broke mine with him. Counselor, your next witness. Your Honor, may I have a minute with my associate?
One minute. Mr. Mason? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I uh, call Mrs. Ellen Cartwright to the stand. Mrs. Cartwright, you are the administrator of St. Mark's Hospital, is that correct? Yes. Is your job there your sole source of income? Yes. Don't you have any investments? Few. Would one of them be the Centurion Ambulance Service? Yes, I have uh, some money in that company. Centurion serves a number of hospitals, does it not? Yes. And one of them is your hospital, St. Mark's? Yes. Mrs. Cartwright, isn't it true that you and your partners are the sole owners of the Centurion Ambulance Service? I really don't see what the... Please, just answer the question. Yes, it's true. One last question. And Mrs. Cartwright, I remind you... You are under oath. Now, who is your partner in the Centurion Ambulance Service? Dr. Peter Lattimore. Your witness? No questions. Dr. Lattimore, you are a partner in the Centurion Ambulance Service, is that correct? Yes, I am. You are also the chief of medicine at St. Mark's Hospital, is that correct? Yes. Last Friday night in the emergency room of St. Mark's Hospital, did you treat Paul Drake for a gunshot wound? Yes, I did. How did you happen to be at the hospital at that hour? Were you on call? No. Were you looking after a patient? I don't remember. It may have been a post-op. Dr. Lattimore, weren't you at a restaurant with friends and weren't you called to the phone by your service? I don't remember. Didn't you rush out without finishing your dinner? I said I don't remember. Doctor, do you usually treat patients in the emergency room? No. Yet you sent the young resident, Dr. Williams, away and treated Paul Drake yourself? Yes. Did you examine his wound? Yes. What was the indicated treatment? It was superficial. I had the nurse bandage it up. Was any medication required? Only what was necessary to cleanse the wound. Dr. Are you familiar with the drug potassium chloride? Of course I am. Could you describe its usage? It's used for um, irregular heart rhythms, fainting, particularly for people on diuretics. But if administered in a large enough dose, it would induce cardiac arrest and would be fatal. Yes. And in a fatal dose, would be almost impossible to detect by autopsy. Yes. Dr. Lattimore, would there have been any reason to give this drug to Paul Drake? No. If I were to show you a syringe from St. Mark's Hospital, taken from the emergency bay after you treated Paul Drake, wouldn't it be filled with a fatal dose of potassium chloride? I don't know. Dr. Lattimore, isn't it true you received a phone call from someone who ordered you to the hospital to kill Paul Drake? 
Your Honor. Isn't it true that the person who called you knew you embezzled money from the hospital for your investments, including the Centurion Ambulance Service? Multiple uh, isn't it true that the person who called you ordered Logan Mr. Mason. to kill Father O'Neill? Mr. Mason, this court will come to order. Mr. Rustin, your objections are sustained. Thank you. I have no further questions, Your Honor. But I would like to reserve the right to recall this witness to the stand. Mr. Reston? I have no questions at this time. Step down. I call Miss Gladys Terry. Miss Terry. Please tell the court where you work. The medical phone service. We're the city's oldest answering service for doctors. Do you handle Dr. Lattimore's calls? Yes, sir, we do. Can you tell me if he received a call at approximately 10 o'clock last Friday night? If he did, it'll be right in here. Your Honor, Paul Drake was shot at Logan's Hotel by Logan's Confederate. Only the person who shot him could have called Dr. Lattimore and told him to finish the job. Now, Miss Terry, what did you find? At 10.30 Friday night, Dr. Lattimore received a call from a gentleman who said it was an emergency. We put him through. And who was that gentleman? Mr. Jonathan Eastman. Your witness. No questions. You may step down. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to recall Dr. Peter Lattimore to the stand. the money together and Eastman was our partner but he had the priest killed O'Neill it was all his idea he did it. order order this court will come to order your honor the people move for a dismissal case dismissed all rise.